Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to uh, have this presentation about an innovative teacher education model called Teachers for the Future. I represent HAME, University of Applied Sciences, HAMK, which is situated in southern Finland. And there I act as a dean of the professional teacher education unit. Uh, Finnish education is quite well known globally. Quite many of you might know PISA, success, some media publicity and news about skills competencies or skills competitions. However, these two media highlights are not the whole, whole truth about our education. And uh, in this presentation I concentrate more on professional learning and especially teacher training for international faculties and universities, colleges which want to become more international by learning in international programs just like our program Teachers for the Future is. We have developed the first pilot together with the Ministry of Education and Culture, Brazil. And in my presentation I will review our first pilot group results and also construct theories suitable for teacher education in international networks and partnerships. First, if I may say some few words about uh, Finland and the education and the so-called success. Why we think and why people globally think that we have found some good solutions. However, I want to be very precise in my preconceptions which I have concerning international uh, transfer of educational systems. Education is always very bound to the context. And I truly believe that educational solutions cannot be transferred like packages from a country to another. But it is always useful to compare your own notions, cultural value, basis, and also ways of working in the schools. In some cases this makes tacit knowledge visible and also it makes it possible to criticize own modes of working and maybe develop them. Uh, why I then think that Finland has found some good solutions for professional learning and and teacher education. First of all, we put the relevance issue quite high in education. And this is why the prestige of vocational and professional education in our country is quite high. This is visible in practice in a way that half of our young people choose general education and the other half chooses vocational. Our curricula are based on competencies where skills, knowledge, attitudes and skills for lifelong learning are combined. And assessment is very often organized in authentic situations in the world of work. This is the case in vocational education but very often the case also in higher education. This brings relevance to education and it makes also possible for the teachers to keep their own competencies updated. This kind of a teacher profession means that we really have to treat our teachers as professionals as autonomous actors and appreciate them a lot. They have to keep constantly good contacts 
with the world of work and act also as international networkers in Europe and much more larger networks. In Finland we have had quite good consensus over educational issues, educational policy and also resources. Of course global economical changes have affected also our policies and will uh, later maybe cause some restructuring, cuts of funding, etc. But they are quite reasonable compared to the rest of the world. And then the last thing which I regard one of the most important is that our education and also our teacher education is very well and deeply grounded in theory, in knowledge, in evidence and is thus research based. Of course education is always also bound to the values and idealistic into certain extent but there needs to be certain evidence to produce good educational systems, practices, study books, teacher education, everything which is uh, restructuring our society for the future generations. So transparent models are also typical for our teacher education. Equal opportunities for everybody in our, our country are one uh, uh, key principle which means that every student has the right to receive the right kind of education for her or him. This means that the teachers have themselves to be active learners and the places or learning environments where they learn become much more diverse than in previous times. The teacher education example I'm going to explore more deeply is based on combining formal and informal learning of teachers coming from abroad to Finland and to be able after the course to really implement what they have been learning in their own home country and home institutions. This kind of an approach and if I may call it course or very long exchange period in a foreign country is a life fulfillment target for many of our participants so far. Quite a luxurious situation to be able to study half a year in your mid-career as many of the teachers have been. It can happen that they change quite thoroughly their mindset and their thinking about a teacher's profession, uh, what kind of a profession it really should and could be when they return home. Empowerment is a word very often used by our participants when they have been studying and being in the position of a learner themselves instead of constantly teaching the others. The formal uh, curriculum of the Teachers for the Future program uh, of course consists of presenting the Finnish model. The Finnish model can be illustrated by a diagram but of course it does not tell the whole truth. It tells about the structure. The structure is rather simple. We have two main pathways, general education and vocational and professional education, which however have no dead ends, so that the students are free to move and to open their study program for new modules from other pathways if they wish so. 
basic education is common for everybody, it's compulsory and it takes normally nine years. Uh, when we talk about teacher education, in universities we need not have a pedagogical qualification, but in practice almost everybody in universities of applied sciences has and holds a pedagogical qualification. And besides that they have to have a degree in master or doctor level and then at least three years of work experience. This means that our educators in our own universities and universities of applied sciences as well vocational schools are very well equipped both with theoretical and practical skills and competencies. So this is something which a foreign institution could regard as a learning target by itself. However, we have to consider how this system became into existence, how the Finnish society was formed from an independent, small and quite poor state to receive such a system in about 100 years. When comparing Finland to countries like Georgia or the case study group Brazil, all these nations, they are totally different. Brazil is huge, diverse, and Finland is rather small. And although we talk about diversity increasing, so it's still quite relational compared to other countries. Uh, if we want to make an educational change in a country, of course, policymakers are interested in structural solutions, core curriculum, legislations, and all these necessary necessities to make anything happen in the educational system. After that, we have to equip the teachers with the skills and competencies, but also attitudes and motivation for a change. The culture of a country is extremely critical. How the students and their relatives, families, peer group appreciates education, what kind of a culture do we have, they play a critical role in the restructuring of education. Nowadays we put more and more uh, interest in informal learning. If students learn more in their free time, through hobbies, through media, so why shouldn't we take that into account also in teacher education? And based on these uh, background theories, we this time chose a quite innovative and new theory of narratives and educational tourism uh, made by Poikela and Boikela in Lapland, Finland for ecological tourism to analyze our success in this international teacher education program. It might in the first place sound a bit like a leisure something which is too nice and very often teachers want to say that they know far they are tourists. They are much more serious people, professionals studying here in Finland. Of course, they have a very demanding program, but we however make benefit uh, from certain theories which make learning even more holistic and their group cohesion much better than in only very structured and moduled processes where learning and everyday life are separated totally from each other. Before going more deeply into these volu 
new theories of voluntary and informal learning and hero narratives, I first tell about the process, how this was done and how it is clever to do in any country. Of course, we have to agree upon the targets uh, with the Ministry of Education or respective authorities in each country. Because educating a teacher or a group of teachers abroad is always a big investment. By saying this, I don't mean only money. It is really investing the brains of a nation and sending them abroad to adapt new ideas and then they have a great responsibility of uh, testing the ideas. How these ideas suit their home country and their home institutions. It's always necessary to tailor the ideas coming from abroad and not adapting them as such. And we have been very happy in this case to negotiate in a friendly partnership together with the Ministry of Education in Brazil and together with our partners in Finland, Tank and Hagahelia Universities, to organize the program with the name Vet Teachers for the Future because it was targeted at vocational and professional teachers in federal institutes. With the partnerships we have been able to support them with all the possibilities to make study visits and to uh, also explore practices in all the professional sectors available in these universities. Embassies have been very helpful and they also help the participants in their daily life because they stay in Finland for five months. The participants come from several federal states of Brazil, so they do not have a common institution where they come from. They do not know each other when they come to Finland, so everything is new to every individual. A new country, a new group, new teachers, a totally different learning environment, a totally different culture, totally different curricula. They are like, like really in an unknown territory. In the case of the teachers for the future program for a Brazilian group, so the ministry chose the areas, the sectors where the teachers should come. And they represent quite well the economy of Brazil. Then we choose, chose the topics together, the wide areas, targets to be learned. And they were learning and teaching processes, e-learning in the 21st century, and then competence-based education curriculum and cooperations with business. And then, then this all was combined into project-based learning and here, especially in the project area, the teachers were uh, exposing very informal and open learning environments, which were very new to them and which were like the touristic uh, tours for them in a very serious and educational purpose. So, we let them in processes of learning, both in targeted and planned situations, but also opened the doors for new things to explore and emerge, and very uh, personal, individual things to be discovered and explored very deeply. And then we, as providers for the educational package for the teachers, need to have respective ways to assess learning and accredit their very informal and uh, personal individual learning results. The research methodology we have been using is quite um, 
much following the teaching process. So we gather lots of data which is accumulating um, authentic in authentic processes of learning and our methodology is based on design based research. We develop the curricula based on experiences which we reflect with the participants and as well with the teachers in our university and partnering universities. And of course we also collect feedback from the funding agencies in Brazil and send them reports to reflect on. The kind of data we have collected so far is normal statistical feedback surveys, videos, blogs, other digital artifacts which are very numerous because the participants love to share their experiences among the group as well as among their peers back in Brazil. We have had so far two pilot groups which are both running and the participants are altogether 60 people. The theories of Poikela and Poikela about informal learning in an ecological touristic uh, study visit consists of five elements. The first one is a tourist group and the second one is everyday life in the area where the group visits. The third one is history and also perspectives to the future, both elements. And the fourth one is constructing a common narrative. And the fifth, the last one is constructing individual narratives. Our purpose is to develop this theory into educational purposes, especially in the context of teacher education in international networks. We have already preliminary findings about the program. Participant satisfaction is very high. In the very beginning of the first pilot group, in the first two months, there was some uh, hesitation, of course, because of the cultural changes, everything was new and so open approach to teacher education was really new for the participants. But later they understood very deeply and very well the targets of their own learning and they really benefited from the freedom provided for them. And now when we learned based on our design elements, we learned together that we have to give more information before we even start uh, our program for the second pilot group. So we have succeeded even better in, in this counseling processes. Uh, the theory of Poikela and Poikela has been developed further to meet the serious educational tourism in education in international contexts for long-lasting teacher training programs and study visits internationally. Now we could say about the first element of Poikela that a tourist group refers to peers. Peers in the study group as well as peers also in the own uh, home institution. Living together with a, a peer group in a foreign country, exploring actions, listening to the peer group and listening to the local teachers, students as well as parents 
in the cases of uh, young students. Taking part, doing and learning together is a very new experience for teachers. They are not used to live like that with their colleagues in most countries and in most cases. So it opens up their minds for learning in a very specific way. They somehow become like young once again. Everyday life refers in this context to acting in schools as well outside schools in public and private life. For example, for the Brazilians, it has been a good and nice experience to see young students walking on the streets on their way to school. Everything is safe, functional, simple, according to their experiences and mind. This was only one case example, but there are several others which differ from their own context. So everyday life refers here, of course, also for the larger society and communities, how they see education and educational institutions, because they are the building blocks of success in education. It's not only teachers and the systems and structures. Interaction between teachers and general public has been one issue of interest. The third element, history and perspectives to the future. That refers in this context to people's actions and, and context. Who was and who were the people who really made our educational system? Who constructed that in the course of history? How old is it? How traditional? how it can be restructured once again. How do the buildings look like? Who built them? What was the interest of industry? What was the interest of the state? What kind of historical myths and legends do Finnish people share in our case? Are teacher autonomy, safety, school success, equality, welfare, functionality, are they really true or are they only metaphors and moods which doesn't exist? So these elements have been discussed in a dialogue for several, several times, I could say even constantly. And they, these discussions, they bring more meaning to teachers learning all the time. And then the fourth element is possible. Only after these three elements I could say that the teachers can construct a common narrative, which in this case re refers to teacher training participants in communicating their actions in especially digital but also other forms. In the case of Brazilians, they have been very eager to share their thoughts in digital format, although they are here present and together. For them it has been very natural and they use extensive amounts of diagrams, photos, videos, which are not so familiar for many teachers, which are used to work more with study books and written information. These expressions of tacit knowledge and new ideas arousing have been extremely interesting for us also as the data for analysis. My first notion about the group pilot one was that they really love to make group photos from the first day being here in Finland. They made group photos and they were posing in very democratic uh, positions, very low and in a very, very friendly and nice uh, atmosphere. So that was describing their 
process of becoming a group and constructing a common narrative. This also was a very good tool to argument their peers and superiors in their home institutions that they are studying seriously, although they are in a foreign country and they could be not present in their own uh, teaching teachers' rooms. Based on this group learning and a common narrative, the fifth element is possible. It brings strength to any individual as a member of the group to construct an individual teacher narrative of everybody's own professional growth. In many cases, teachers face an identity formation process. Their professional identity is changing. And there, of course, you need reflection together with a peer group. And then these individual narratives also contain testing the ideas from Finland, what they have been experiencing here, understanding it together now, especially together with their peers back in Brazil. This kind of a comparison and planning for the implementation phase when they return their home institution and want to use their newly learned methods is a very good option. They can start it earlier and they can make a reality test so that the cultural shock when they return to their own home is not too bad. I present some case examples of the individual learning uh, narratives, diaries, uh, which make use of uh, several web tools. There they tell us at the same time their peers about their testing in Brazil. What kind of uh, courses or what kind of seminars they have been organizing already back in Brazil, in the case of Pilot Group 1. And we support them, of course, uh, if they face some problems. But in most cases, they have been rather successful because they have a feeling of belonging to the original group here in Finland, which was in existence last autumn, autumn 2014. So this feeling of belonging to something which is more or less a teacher movement has been one of the end results of this innovative teacher training program. We also carry out traditional quality assessment of the program, of course, because we have to be serious and transparent with public funding of the uh, of the country, foreign country. And then in this case, I do not present these quality assurance procedures more deeply because my purpose was to concentrate on the innovative elements of the study program. Who can organize a course like that? Maybe not the traditional teacher trainer who likes systemacy and ready-made packages, which are the same case by case. We have to open up our minds and learn also ourselves in Finland and not think that we can only deliver packages to foreigners coming to see our educational wonderland. No, not at all. The teacher trainers have to have totally new skills to learn also themselves with the partners, partner countries and partner participants coming to Finland. The teacher trainers in Finland, they have to possess the skills of organizing several services and activities to meet the needs of individual foreign teacher training groups coming to our university. 
they have to be entrepreneurial, they have to have leadership, they have to be able to recognize tacit knowledge and understand teaching and learning on the job. They have to have deep cultural and social competencies and be able to exploit existing knowledge in their working community as well as the broader learning environment. This means that they also develop themselves in producing new innovations. And this brings benefit for both Finland and international partners. Thank you for your uh, interest in my presentation.